Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. Today's episode is going to be a really different one because I've got some important administrative work to do. And also you can see there's a room opening up over here. We'll come back to that later on. I'm going to pop outside. You can see I've got a map in my inventory. And I want to start this episode off by giving you a little bit of a, I don't know, you might call it a piece of wisdom or something like that. It's just something that I constantly think about. And that is to remind yourself of your own ignorance, to remind yourself of the things that you don't know. Lots of us have opinions about things in life and we like to express them, but we usually base those opinions on what we know and don't really think about all the things we might not know, right? So here's what happened. At the end of the last episode, I did a map reveal of this area, okay? And hmm, when does it appear as a smaller thing like that? Yeah, I must have done it like this, because I did it right at the end of the episode, and I got a load of comments. Some people just pointing out, hey, Asumi, you did that map reveal, and there was an icon on the screen for another video that meant that I couldn't go and look at it. And then some people were pretty mean about it. They're like, Asumi, you're horrible. You're just trying to trick us into clicking on another video. That's not the case. This is why you should remind yourself of things you might not know, because you have to make an assumption as to why I would show you this map, but there would actually be a video on the screen. It's quite simple. I'm a bit of a derp, okay? I didn't actually think that would be a problem, you know? I was just recording my video, flying around, showing you the map, and you may have noticed this area has expanded a little bit. That is absolutely true. And then when it goes to adding the overlays that you do on YouTube, it's a very good practice to add links at the end of your videos and to add little cards that pop up during the video. It gets people interested in your other content and clicking on it. And that is a good practice if you want to be on the YouTube platform and have your channel grow as it will generate more views. So it's something I do for every video and it just didn't cross my mind that that might obscure what you want to look at on the screen. And that's exactly what it did. So I assure you it wasn't intentional, I apologise if you're one of the people who are upset, it's probably a vocal minority, but it just made me think people have got to realise sometimes that there can be more to a story than what you assume, and that I think is an important life lesson. And so I mentioned I had some administrative duties to do today, and before we get to talking about what I do actually have planned for what we're going to be doing, we should hop into that. I need to download a backup of this world onto my computer, and I need to turn the server off, I need to open that back up, and we have to prune the end chunks, we have to prune some chunks in the Never and the Overworld because the backup has become ridiculously large recently. There are lots of people using their Elytras, flying around the world like myself, you know, going over to that Podzile biome and loading up a serious amount of terrain that's never going to be loaded again. So it means I've got to do some pruning and I'm going to show you exactly how this is done. So first of all, I've taken the server offline. You can see that it's down, there's no way to connect to it, that's very important, and I've downloaded the world map to my computer now. So here we are in a program known as MC Edit, as it says in the top left, and in here we have a view of the world. There is the spawn, and the spawn chunks, and we can fly around this and it will load it up and show us everything. Now yes, some of the blocks will look a little bit awful, <laughs> and that's because this is an old program that we use, and it hasn't had all of the newer textures loaded into it. But what we can do is we can switch out to this chunk view, and this is where you're going to see uh, the problem that we face. So right now the game is, or sorry, the, the MC Edit program is looking at all of the chunks, and it is generating what they look like from above, and it'll actually get slower and slower as it does more and more, and it's only done a fraction of the world. We are looking at the world right here. This is as far as I can zoom out, and if I do this correctly, by holding right click you can see this big chunk of land is probably where Cubfan has flown around and made his map. In fact, I'm pretty dead sure that that's exactly why there is this big chunk like that. And then as we go out to the edges here, you can see there's these places where people have flown around with their elytras. So a lot of this stuff is going to get pruned and I have to double check and make sure that no one's built out there or there is a reason that there is something like that. You can see someone's gone exploring around in this space and then one of these should lead to XB's Woodland Mansion. I was going to say it was this one, but maybe not. That's probably from where someone's gone through a never. And if you haven't figured it out already, yes, we've got this weird square in the middle, but all of this lighter stuff is where the chunks actually exist. So out in these ones over here, we found signs of life. This is XB's Woodland Mansion, and of course we don't want to purge this. 
What I might do is purge some of the terrain below it because it didn't look like there had been anything built over here, although there has been some flying down to this bottom bit. And I've had to reload the program several times as well. You see this process of it generating chunks? Well, after it's done that several thousand times, it gets extremely slow, and that's because the program isn't really designed for opening worlds of this size. So I've had to open and close it as several times in search of XP's area. And for the other areas that I explored, there's like big bulks of land like here, which I think I'm going to leave alone because there's been a lot of exploring. But over on this side, there are really no signs of life. It looks like people have just been flying about with their elytra wings. So in order to purge this from the world, what we need to do is go into chunk control over here and then go to prune and actually I'm going to click on no okay I was very worried I might have done something wrong then so actually we don't click on prune first we have to select chunks which we can do by left clicking so if I click on an area like this we are selecting chunks to be pruned okay and then when we press the prune button it is going to delete them permanently now I should make you aware that we're actually doing this on a backup of the backup so I've downloaded a backup made a copy of it and that's what we're editing. So if I make any mistakes here, then we can always uh, add this area back to the world. So there's another large selection. Then what we do is we click on prune, and this program is going to delete all of those chunks. And it is starting to lag like crazy. But if we give it time, it will get the job done. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you make backups of your backups. I'm a complete idiot. Prune is the act of selecting what you want to keep and removing what's around it. Now this is taking a very long time and I'm thinking I'll probably leave the overworld alone. Let's go to the end and prune some chunks there. Uh, I've deleted the rest of the world. Thank goodness that this is a backup of my backup. Oh, what a derp. So welcome to our end. This is interesting and chaotic. <laughs> Look at all these places that people have been flying going all over the place and we need to prune all of this because it is taking up a lot of file space and this is the kind of admin work that I have to do you know so this is what our end looks like in the middle we're keeping this entire region for obvious reasons we've got the ender that has been selected as well and you'll see that there's this bridge going out to the side well that is a way to get a shulker back into the overworld which is something I wanted to do later on in the season so I'm going to keep that bridge and this little bit of end city over here now as I zoom out you'll notice there's a big blob of land down the bottom here this is Biffa's base and it took me a while to find it, but then all of these blocks right here made it very obvious where it was that he had settled down. So we're keeping that, and also we're keeping the little portals that you get through to on the other side. I've got a feeling if I were to remove these, they might not generate again, which would cause us a huge issue. Now there's 20 of them in total, and I've actually selected all 20 of them, despite there being a bit of land here that hasn't been explored that doesn't have a portal in it. I also noticed down here as well, you see these red dots? These are entities, and I can't help but feel someone might have died there, and their items might have scattered out around them so I decided not to delete those chunks as well but we've selected all of the ones that we want to keep which means we can use the prune tool correctly this time so this is what our end dimension looks like now not much else here to see and we should go to the overworld because I trimmed a few chunks over there as well didn't do too many though as you can see some from the left and some from the right and that I believe is beyond the world border which would be up the top here got something interesting to show you though I noticed this as I make a few selections here the game starts to get a little bit choppy the more and more of these that I put uh, <laughs> the laggier it gets which is really strange and that only happens in the overworld but anyway it's job done we're now going to upload this back to the server let me know with a comment down below if you enjoyed that segment. I thought it would be interesting to show you a little bit of the behind the scenes. The other reason I showed you it as well is because it took me three and a half hours. I could have been playing Hermitcraft for those three and a half hours, but unfortunately it was a job that needed doing. And a little bit of information for you. That world size was 6.25 gigabytes, and we've pruned it down to 3.5. So that means that downloading backups is going to be... Uh, easier, it takes less time, I can do it more frequently and now we're going to pop down here, we got a job to do do you remember there was a room up the top there that I sort of glanced past earlier well we're going to be sending items to it and also where I've been working on this area there's no like gap to fall down apart from this one which I've now just remembered, right so down the bottom here we've got a whole bunch of items a crazy amount, look at that <laughs> and it's backed up all the way through here. This farm is working a treat, but what we've got to do now is automatically move those items. And we're going to do that with a little bit of redstone. Let me grab my redstone chest. There is one item in particular that I need, a dropper. Apparently I've got no more of those. 
Uh, to move this, what we're going to do is have this one face outwards like that, or actually it could face in this direction, so it'll point into this hardball. This is going to make a mess. There's no other way to do this than to make a mess. We're going to have it point into that, and then that's going to have ice next to it and water above it. How do I get out of here? There we go. So, yeah, this means we power this with redstone, the items will go up, and the reason we've got to do that is because we're going to put ice at this level here. If I go lower, then we're going to have to be weaving around the bedrock, and I don't really want to remove that stuff. It's a real pain in the butt to do so. Um, so, yeah, with an ice stream, we bring the items over here. They're going to go in this direction, and then we're going to create an item elevator going upwards. You can see I've sort of already dug out the area where it's going to go to. It is just over here on the side, and that goes up to that room that you saw earlier. Now I know that some of you are going to comment about the hoppers here and say why don't you just rearrange them so they face closer to where we're going. I'll tell you why, because of this guy, the axe murderer. Now he's hit me a few times and i got thorns on my armour so his health might be low and he's killed me before as well so I don't fancy messing around with this guy. I'm happy to leave it be and just make this thing start from over here. In fact we are kind of ready to go. We've got to grab some ice here and make the water streams. Problem is... As you can see, we've got redstone here. Can I get away with doing that and being able to break it through that gap? No. So I have to do this very cautiously. Okay, break, place. And that appeared to have worked. Awesome. So we should be able to see the water through there. Excellent. And by the way, there are no torches around here. Okay, that was pretty close. That was pretty close. That was silly, but it didn't break anything. There's no torches around here. The light is coming from Optifine and Dynamic Lighting, which I have in my hand. And apparently I'm out of these blocks. Well, we'll do that for now. Um, so that allows us to see, but otherwise it's very dark down here. And the reason I've surrounded this with stone blocks is just in case I'm a little bit silly. I'm in this area and I place down a torch somewhere. So anyway, the water's going to lead all the way down to the end. You're going to see the redstone that we've seen already. It's the same clock each time. And whoopsie, let's silk touch that back into our inventory. Here we go, and there it is. So after that one, you've just got a hopper to pick up the items, goes into here, and this thing will send them up to the room above. And this is that room, and those are the last blocks to go in it. And maybe the only blocks in here that need changing. That doesn't look terribly great. It works, though. This is the same theme as the map room around the corner. I love this room. It looks ever so cool. So I've just taken that, and obviously it's a smaller version of it. Now, there's no items in the chest yet, because I haven't run a test. Hopefully everything is good. What we're going to do is pop down below and basically just point... Oh, oh. <laughs> Could have taken a fair bit of damage there, couldn't I? We're going to point that hopper into that dropper and it should start working straight away because there's items in there. Yep, there you go. So we hear some clicking. Off go the items. We can see them go through the water stream. Just want to make sure they all get up to the top okay. And we can't forget about these chests, of course. You can see that I've simplified this whole process just by turning around the hoppers that were here to face the other way and now we can bunk all of that stuff into there and I put all of my items in a chest first of all so we can continue on our way just by grabbing it all like that so good news we can see the items making their way down here then they're going into the elevator going all the way up to the top I don't see any popping out to the side there's no losses here whatsoever and we can check the chest of course I'm with my spectator account and look at that all of it's making its way to the top so job well done now we can get to our next order of business, which is going to be a mini prank. Now, I need you to jog your memory and remember this space over here. There used to be something big and ghastly. A screen mask was built over here by Tango and Impulse. It's kind of occurred to me that I'm actually sort of only pranking Tango back, but uh, it'll have to do because Tango's got a nice and evil base and it's actually probably the one of the few places that what we're going to build is suitable for and oh, we'll talk about what we're going to build it's going to be a temporary thing you know something to just have a little bit of fun with but it requires quartz and we don't have a lot of quartz at all in fact that's all we've got <laughs> that right there and that is not going to be enough because I need quite a few quartz blocks for what we're going to be doing so it looks like first of all to get prepared for this prank we got to be heading into the nether it's occurred to me that I've never spent too much time in this never this season because I've never really needed quartz. This is probably the only time I've built with quartz this season, isn't it? And which direction are we going in? It's always confusing. I really need to throw something down to let us know where we're going. We're going to go in this direction because I was thinking I haven't been mining for quartz in the never. I don't really know where other players have been doing that. And so we need to get far, far away. 
And of course we've built some some nether tunnels. This one goes to the witch hut and then if we continue down the side here it goes to the place with the parrots. So I figured if we travel through the nether towards there at some point we're probably going to find some fresh quartz or an area where none's been mined. It sounds like a good plan and check this out there's some on the way over here as well. I can hear the grunting of pigment around here. There you go. That's a good old clue isn't it? Oh and it looks like other players have been in this area but straight away quartz over there. We're standing on top of quartz. This looks like an alright spot to grab some. There's some over there as well. I've got my cheaty zoom key. That's going to help me. So, I've got my Minoob juice with me. Of course, I've got some fire protection on some of this armor. Don't I? Is it the helmet? Blast protection. I thought I had fire protection here. Okay, well, got to be very careful not to fall into the lava. And also, my silk touch picks need repairing. So, we're not going to be silk touching this stuff. We're going to be breaking it down into quartz. So, we might as well break this as well, which means it takes up more of your inventory space. So, I've got a shulker box as well. I feel like I'm prepared, you know. From one never to another, peeps. Wow, that was a cool drop in. <laughs> Rotango's base. I I've flown around this thing and shown it quite a few times in my videos. I'm sure you're all familiar with what's going on here. Loss has changed though since I was last here, mainly down below I believe there is now a whole bunch of netherrack. <laughs> Look at that, the nether is coming into the overworld over here. You can't escape it and I need to pick a spot in which to do this. I don't think I want to rush into it but I can't help but feel just over here on this flat platform will probably be the best place in terms of visibility and for Tango to clean it up as well. Don't want to mess with what he's got going on down here. Don't want to get involved with those mobs as well, and uh, I'll tell you a funny story. Okay, so I was looking for some materials to do this prank with, and what did I find? <laughs> All of the quartz that we needed to make those quartz blocks. I'm a silly goose, I tell you, I'm a silly goose, but we needed uh, four of those, we got those, and we're going to need a whole bunch of seeds as well. Oh yes, it's going to be, it's quite mysterious at the moment. What is X going to do? Why does he need seeds and quartz? Well, you'll find out very shortly. Yeah, I think this is a good spot, but I'm going to fly around and double check. So this is the spot. I'm going to need some ice for this and I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to need some more dirt as well because we're about to make a crop field. So this is where the prank is going to be. This square right here is the deal. And what I've gone on done is I've built some like support beams going out and that means I can just travel back and forth a little easier while I'm placing all the dirt and in between each of these we are going to need water because that's what all the seeds are for. I've got a chest full of bone meal as well so I'm going to have to plant all these seeds and grow them which is kind of interesting not done that before purposely made a field of wheat but that's the deal and I also haven't really tampered with anything of tangos here as well it comes close to this netherrack he's got on this side and the only thing I had to do was remove one fire block okay I didn't touch the netherrack and to be fair like I don't think tango would have minded if I had moved one or two uh, then again we are building a prank in his base so I don't know maybe he'd be upset by it so this next bit might be a bit tiresome, I've got to do all these one by one and I think it might be straightforward, we right click with the hose, switch to the seeds, hold down right click, yep and it grows it the full way. So I'd be wise to put those two together, hold down right click, in fact I can just continuously hold down right click right and then swap back with my mouse wheel and of course I've got to make sure it grows all the way. That being said the time that I'm spending here doing the prank it will probably grow most of the way but we'll get it all grown to begin with so we don't have to worry about that later. I've changed my mind I actually just prefer holding down right click and doing this after you've hoed it all because you don't have to think as much you just sort of aim you don't have to scroll back and forth so that's much better and I haven't actually told you what it is we're building yet right and I'm gonna make it a bit of a guessing game as we go along here to some of you it'll become obvious what we're building to some extent at some point or another but this is not my own creation right here on the stream.assumerworld.com plot world I was roaming around looking at all the plots all the things that are built and something caught my eye it's what we're building right now this was originally built by Smurf Sodden and remember that name when you get to the end of this build because it was uh, so awesome to just stumble upon that someone had uh, a really cool idea and they built it on the plot world. It wasn't relevant to the biomes thing, but I saw it and I thought, you know what, I just I have to build this and I need an excuse. And because Tango pranked me and what he said in his prank was kind of relevant to this, it means I've got someone to prank and I've got an excuse to build this, right? So that that's why we're doing this. And once again, thank you Smurf Sodden if you're watching. I absolutely adore this thing. Everyone else will when they see it, I'm sure. Alright, so I need some rockets. We're going to fly away and look at this thing. And speaking of looking at it, the angle and perspective is going to be important. So 
So let's come over here, and this might, just might, start to look familiar. I think the next phase is going to give it away for a lot of you. Okay, there we go. We've got a field with crosses in, right? Now the thing is, this thing probably looks best from up in the sky looking down at it, and maybe not so much from down here, although now that I stand in front of it, I feel like this is going to be a very nice perspective as well. Anyway, I've got some more building to do with the quartz. Let's get this next part done, and some of you are probably going to get it. Well, I've got to say, that looks fantastic. I'm enjoying every second of building this. As soon as I saw it on that Plot World server, I'm like, that's something I've got to build in survival, and check it out. <laughs> Now some of you probably still don't get the reference, I imagine most of you got it by now. This next bit will be, once again, very telling, so I'm just going to crack on and build it. I just placed the last block. <laughs> oh, what is this? What is going on? Hello, hello. Let's fly up into the sky. Let's turn around. And behold, <laughs> the pastor of Muppets. That's me right there. Check me out. Oh, that is so funny. And that face looks really derpy. <laughs> so this is a take on Metallica's classic Master of Puppets album. And I just saw this on a plot. Do you know what? It's not finished. I've got to take down those leaves. But someone's parried it to say my name. And they built me as well. My arms up at the back. I love this ever so much, man. I can't tell you how awesome this is. And I'm so glad that we've done it as a prank. Now, the reason that we can link it to Tango is because he built that giant screen face from my guitar videos. And he said, you play guitar like Metallica, but you look like Daft Punk. So there's a very loose reason for me to come over here and do this. I just wanted an excuse. I don't care if Tango's going to tear this thing down. He don't want no Asuma hanging out in his base all the time. Um, but, yeah... I need to like come up with some lore to tie it all together. And also, I had to borrow some materials from Tango here. I have like no netherwart farm and no way of obtaining some of these blocks. So I figured since he's like tearing this down and he's going to keep all this quartz, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I used a few. I don't think, I don't think, guys, I, I mean, there might be a little bit of a hint around this place, but I don't think Tango's short on nether warts and nether blocks, you know? I've got this bit of a feeling about that. So I think it'll be all right if you know what I'm saying. Peeps, i got to say, this was a fantastic prank. I love this right here. And i got a book for Tango, which I'll put down at the bottom so he can read it. Let's have a read together, though. Or a sing, perhaps. <coughs> Your prank was worth all that, but in the wrong habitat. Just a scream without a reason. My prank will amaze, drift into your gaze without needing a reason. PTO. Tango. Tango, here's the prank that I've been after. Tango, Tango, this is not a lie. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I mean, I think that's pretty funny, if you ask me. Maybe the last line a little bit weak. I didn't really know how to end that, but uh, there you go. It's, it's the lyrics from the song, if you didn't get that. Tango, I've returned your favour. You've been pranked. In all honesty, I just needed a reason to build this amazing mashup by Smurf Sodden. Feel free to tear it down whenever you like. It is immortalized in YouTube Legacy now. And there we go. That's that's a prank well done, if you ask me. I enjoyed that. I've had a lot of fun on the server today, peeps. It was a little bit boring in the morning when I had to spend several hours pruning the world and downloading it and uploading it and doing backups and all of that boring stuff but I hope you enjoyed that little segment and I love the prank I hope you enjoyed that as well if you have enjoyed the video leave a like and as always thank you for your support I do truly appreciate it and I hope you're enjoying this series and let me know what you thought of the prank with a comment down below but that's going to be it for me this one ciao for now and I'll see you later bye bye